One hospital in the Gaza Strip is accepting many civilians wounded in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And officials at one Southern Kentucky hospital investigate after a lockdown last night. And we are dry and warmer on Thursday and Friday, but showers return by this weekend. Those details coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Wounded people are arriving at the Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City today after Israel pounded the Palestinian enclave of Gaza in retaliation for one of the bloodiest attacks in its history. Fire, uh, fighters from Islamist group Hamas killed 1,200 Israelis and abducted dozens more as they attacked Israeli towns. In Washington, House Democratic leaders were joined by Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Gregory Meeks during a news briefing today. I want to acknowledge that there are innocent Palestinians in both Gaza and the West Bank that hope to just live normal and free lives. They want nothing to do with Hamas. The Hamas attack is considered the deadliest incursion into Israeli territory since Egypt and Syria's attacks in the Yom Kippur War 50 years ago. More than 500 residential buildings have been destroyed. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said today that a spillover of the conflict in Israel must be avoided and that he is concerned about reported attacks on Israel from southern Lebanon. I appeal to all parties and those who have an influence over those parties to avoid any further escalation and spillover. I call for the immediate release of all Israeli hostages held in Gaza. Civilians must be protected at all times. Hamas has demanded freedom for all 5,200 prisoners the Palestinians say are held in Israeli jails. Some video showed flares lighting up Israel's sky near the Israel-Lebanon border seen from the southern Lebanese town of Ramya today. The Iran-backed Hezbollah group in Lebanon is on a war footing, deploying special forces and priming its rockets in preparation for the possibility of war with Israel following the Hamas attack on Saturday. Hezbollah's Palestinian allies, Hamas and Islamic Jihad, have also entered the fray. France has deployed 10,000 police officers to protect some 500 Jewish sites in that country. Those include schools and synagogues across France following the Hamas attacks in Israel. France's interior minister added that more than 20 people have been detained in connection with anti-Semitic threats and acts since Saturday. Yesterday, the Paris police chief banned two pro-Palestinian gatherings set to take place Thursday. Well, after some sunny weather on Tuesday, we are tracking some gloomy weather across the mountains on Wednesday. But if you're a fan of the warm weather, some good news for you. Some above average air is on the way, but not today, though. Here's a live look across the mountains from London to Hazard to Pikeville. And we are below average in the middle to lower 60s under a cloudy sky. And most of us right now in those middle 60s up to 67 for Manchester, 65 in London, 66 in Somerset. We should be close to 71, so we are below average, but some increased temperatures on the way by Thursday, also Friday, all thanks to this warm front and that will continue to push off to the north. So some warmer air is on the way. So again, if you like the warmer weather, you will love the forecast on Thursday, also Friday. Check this out. Temperatures in the upper 70s and lower 80s. Be sure to enjoy it, though, because it will not last long. More below average air is on the way by this weekend. Also into next week, highs on Saturday back in the upper 60s. And then we struggle to make it out of the middle 50s by Sunday and Monday. So we are chilly to end your weekend. Also kick off the new work week. That full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. An investigation is ongoing after a Southern Kentucky hospital was placed on lockdown Tuesday night. Police in London say the action came after a patient said he saw someone with a gun. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has an update. 
It has pretty much been a normal day here at St. Joseph London Hospital after what was a rather scary series of events here on Tuesday night, but it's normal procedures now after a threat prompted a lockdown here. Nobody in, nobody out, and patients kept in their rooms. It started around 8.30 Tuesday night when a patient called for help saying someone was in their room with a gun. It's not clear if the person actually threatened the patient or anyone else. The hospital does not have metal detectors, but they do have security guards. No gunman was seen and no one was hurt, but the hospital was placed on lockdown. Police are still reviewing what took place, but getting copies of surveillance video was problematic. And due to the uh, technical difficulties there at the hospital, officers was, uh, were unable to view the video surveillance footage at the time of the incident. St. Joseph London released a statement this morning thanking all the law enforcement for their work and also stating that that law enforcement did conduct a very thorough search of the hospital and its grounds and there was no credible threat found. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. In addition to London police, deputies from the Laurel County Sheriff's Office and state police also responded to the hospital. New research ranks Kentucky seventh in the nation for the most dangerous weather for drivers. That's according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The report says nearly 14% of crashes in the state occur during inclement weather. Rain was the greatest risk for drivers and led to the highest number of weather-related crashes. It's been more than three months since the last of the chemical weapons stockpile was destroyed in Kentucky. The Bluegrass Army Depot holds a lot of history in Madison County. Back in the 1940s, the first chemical weapons arrived at the depot. Now, several decades later, they are celebrating a historic achievement to what they say is a safer future. Julia Sandor was at an event today and spoke to those who have followed this long journey. It's been a long time coming. Thanks to you, we are one step closer to realizing a world free of chemical weapons. You have made your country proud. The last munition in the U.S. chemical weapons stockpile was destroyed at the Bluegrass Army Depot early this July. The first chemical weapons arrived in the 1940s. This is the culmination of my life's work. For nearly 40 years, Craig Williams advocated for the community, dedicated to ensuring the safety of those in Madison County. So proud of everybody involved, particularly the workforce, who operated this facility for years with some of the most dangerous materials in the world, without anyone getting hurt, protected the community. I mean, it's just a, a wonderful achievement, and I couldn't be happier. Among the speakers at the event were Senator Mitch McConnell and Governor Andy Bashir, both sharing their pride in the completion. And as of right now, there is still more work to be done at the Bluegrass Army Depot, with safety and community at the forefront of their minds. You know, it, the mission's not over. Um, it is a great time to celebrate because we've, we've met that international treaty obligations, but uh, we still have to get through surety. Now the Bluegrass Chemical Agent Destruction Pilot Plant Workforce is focused on their closure phase, with their priority being the safety of the workers, public, and environment. In Madison County, Julia Sandor, WKYT. According to the Bluegrass Army Depot, that closure phase will continue for about three to four years. It will focus on the disposal of all contaminated secondary wastes, decontaminating the facilities and equipment, among other priorities. The Army plans to continue using the depot in other ways after that closure phase ends. Republicans have nominated Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise to be the next House Speaker. Now they must try to unite their deeply divided majority to elect the conservative in a floor vote after ousting Congressman Kevin McCarthy from the job. In private balloting at the Capitol today, House Republicans narrowly pushed aside Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, the Judiciary Committee Chairman, in favor of Scalise. I think Steve Scalise is a great guy, but he got 51% of the conference. So my point is this, if we're going to take this floor to the vote, or this, this vote to the floor, I hope you try to get everybody together and figure out how you're going to get all the others to say, okay, Steve's the guy. 
A floor vote of the whole House is not expected today, but could come soon as tensions are still running high among Republicans who have brought the House to a standstill with the bitter infighting. Former President Trump had endorsed Jim Jordan. Coming up as First at Four continues, the CEO of X, formerly Twitter, makes an announcement about accounts linked to Hamas. And you may need the umbrella for those weekend plans as rain chances increase. All those details coming up.